Hi all. Today we're yet again talking about fragrances and this time about my picks for the fall this year. It's a little bit late due to the fact that I just recently returned to filming, but I thought that uh, a video about fall fragrances would still be relevant and the season is not over. I've had a slightly different approach to fall fragrances this year and uh, my selection is a little bit different than it normally is. I have a couple that have just appeared in my personal perfume stash this year and I chose six that we're going to talk about today. Number one is going to be this guy which is L'Absolu uh, by Narcissa Rodriguez. Uh, it's L'Absolu for her. It's from the for her line as you can observe yourself because the packaging is quite standard. This one is a deep plum aubergine kind of color. I've had it for a couple of years and generally I more wear it in winter. However, this time around I really gravitated towards it for the fall and this is not a powerful strong hitter um, regardless of what you might think when you hear l'absolu implying that the fragrance is going to be a powerhouse implying that the fragrance is going to be very concentrated with a huge sillage at least that's that's what comes to mind for me whenever I hear such big claims l'absolu for me means that the concentration is really high. It is kind of. So this is a fragrance that is long lasting, but within the within maybe two to three hours, it really turns into a skin scent. A lovely skin scent, but the skin scent and not the huge sillage monster nevertheless. Obviously, Narcissa Rodriguez line is always famous for their masks. Masks are what they do, masks are what they do best. They have a signature musk that they use in pretty well every release I've ever smelled. And this is no different. This is this soft, creamy, musky base that they're so famous for. And uh, floral. So it's a musky floral. Not much going on here in terms of base. The fragrance is kind of middle and, and top note heavy. Uh, there is sandalwood that grounds it a little bit, but this is just to hold the scent together. It does but there isn't anything apart from amber that really rounds it out. Patchouli here is fairly wearable, not, uh, not the dirty, earthy, um, hippie patchouli that some people might really not like. Uh, patchouli here is just part of the composition without contributing that stank character to the fragrance, which isn't always a bad thing, but personally does not wear well on me. Um, it really turns very rancid, that kind of a patchouli. So patchouli is tricky for me personally, and I approve this one in terms of if you're a patchouli hater, but you like musky florals, you might like this. Creaminess is there, um, mostly because A, the musk is creamy, but B, there's also um, a whole commotion around tuberose in this particular uh, scent. Tuberose is the star of the show. There's some supporting like nondescript white florals, they say it's jasmine, whatever, doesn't matter. Really what you're smelling here is creamy musk and creamy tuberose, but the tuberose is not the Robert Piguet uh, fracas tuberose. It's a tame version, really rather clean, and again the tuberose here is really contributing mostly the creaminess and the um, tropical floral spirit of it. However, although tuberose is considered a tropical floral, we're not talking tropical scent here. We are talking slightly more dense, maybe a bit syrupy, uh, amber-based and musk-based fragrance. It is most similar to the darker side of the For Her line and the Narciso line. Um, if you are thinking about maybe Narciso for her eau de toilette in the black bottle, or you're thinking about the Narciso in the cube, it's their cousins. So same spirit that way. It is a scent that is rather unique, rather intriguing, a bit mysterious. So if you want to create that slightly cool but creamy, mysterious flair to yourself, you might like this a lot. Um, I would say if you don't like florals or you don't like tuberose, probably skip on this one because it is full of, full of that. This is what it is. This is a, a floral tuberose fragrance. If you do love tuberose, you might really find something cool and special here. Um, it is unique. It isn't um, 
um, mass produced uh, blind blindfold me and I would never be able to tell what fragrance it is kind of scent. Um, it's quite distinct. It has a personality. Uh, again, what we're talking about for me, if I'm visualizing the character that would uh, that would want to wear something like that, it would be a, a quiet, mysterious person, maybe with a dark past, but we don't really know. She does not talk a lot. She chooses seclusion. Maybe she's a romantic at heart, but she's been hurt. There is a tragic flair to this particular scent. Again, the cool creaminess is an interesting combo. Usually creamy scents are on the warm side of things. Um, very pretty, and I think for fall, it's a very interesting fit for fall for me because um, where I live, which is in Canada, fall is beautiful and opulent, um, but unfortunately quite cold. Um, it gets cold fast, the day gets very short very fast, so there is this moodiness that, that is in the fall that is a prominent feature of fall where I live and that moodiness is kind of reflected in this scent. So I'm quite, I gravitate towards it quite a lot this year and I don't remember ever wearing it in fall. And I don't remember ever wearing it in the fall but I think it might uh, transition itself into fall fragrance category for me. Next in line and it is a surprise find for me, um, just very recent find for me. I became much more interested in honey-based florals, honey fragrances, and really truly I was really into one of those kinds of scents previously, which I still have um, and I have a backup for because I love it so much. And I think it's Aqua Allegoria Flora Nymphaea. That's the one that really got me thinking about honey-based fragrances. And so I kind of recently went a little nuts with the with the honey fragrances and this fall it's reflected in this new um, as you can see I really haven't used a ton of it but it is on my fall shelf uh, fragrance shelf for sure this is Kim Kardashian uh, pure honey <laughs> uh, although I'm not a Kardashian clan fan nor do I know very much about them nor am I interested to find out. I still get quite curious about affordable fragrances. And I have to say, um, Kim's fragrances are not the worst out there in terms of celebrity frags, and uh, Pure Honey is actually quite good. I was very pleasantly surprised. I wanted something on the affordable side to recommend to you guys, and I ordered a few affordable fragrances to test. Um, and uh, this was one of them, and this is the one that I really enjoy quite a bit. As advertised well first of all it's a beautiful little bottle I can't say like it's really uncomfortable to hold right you have to hold it with both hands because it has this weird um, pyramidal shape maybe a hexagon on the bottom something like that but it does have a super cute little metal um, metal B and uh, a label I, I don't know I think for a such for such an affor affordable fragrance this is really nice presentation I was happy with it with, when it arrived I was really ready for it to look very cheap and it did not it looks really nice impressive packaging so uh, tick in that box I was I was already sort of okay 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 Kim thanks you're not putting out stuff that looks crappy excellent and then I smelled it now, I have a complaint, a major complaint with the scent, and uh, I, I will be upfront about it. The complaint is it does not last. <laughs> this is not a scent that is going to stay with you all day. It doesn't have projection, it doesn't have a lot of throw, it doesn't have longevity that I like. However, I am still not disappointed with it. Well, I'm disappointed that it doesn't last as long, otherwise it'd be like, a super top shelf favorite um, and it's just a good scent that I associate, associate more so with fall um, but it would be absolutely top shelf material if it lasted so there's a quality issue here but also you definitely can't over spray as much as you want to because it is quite affordable this guy is a honeyed floral a true honeyed floral it's a very pretty scent um, definitely there's a beeswax note and that doesn't sit well on everyone if you are somebody who does not wear beeswax well on your skin this is not going to be for you because there's a lot of it here so there, there is a sweet honey but more so beeswax with a uh, with a small portion of honey 
and a white florals, uh, sweet white florals. So we have slightly zingy freesia and we have tons of honeysuckle, which is personally one of my favorite white florals because it's just so happy and sparkly and makes you feel positive for some reason or another. If you want positivity, this is quite a fun, positive daytime scent that settles into a skin scent fairly quickly, you have to reapply. Now, if you are somebody who enjoys a skin scent and does not want to project your scent everywhere you go, um, this is going to probably be for you. It's going to be probably be for people who do not like large projection and who would rather reapply. Now, a honey scent is a very appropriate scent to wear as a skin scent. How many times will I say scent in this one sentence? Right, mom jokes, moving on. They do say there's like coconut here, whatever, none of that, no. Really, this is a very clean uh, impression for me. It's beeswax, honey, uh, sweet white florals, mostly honeysuckle. This is what it is. If that sounds good to you, <laughs> I would really recommend you check it out. Um, I do warn you, of course, again, I want to emphasize that. I'm not recommending it for people who love sillage and who love big throwers. It's not going to work for you. If you want your fragrance to wear all day and it will annoy you if it doesn't, that won't work for you. Um, but for me, this is a really, really fun way to add this honeyed, uh, fun, happy flair to fall because fall is um, a season which I do associate with this warm, honeyed, uh, golden, amber beauty. Uh, again, no, no amber here, but uh, the honey really reminds me of the of the amber colors and the way that uh, sun plays in amber. Amber is very fall colored as well. Um, I'm getting off on a tangent. As to who I would see wearing this, somebody who enjoys sweet, authentically solid floor kind of presentation and perfume. Because, because really three things, two of them are honey and beeswax, very similar product. Um, plus the honeysuckle slash white florals. If you like a simple composition that is linear, opens beautifully and doesn't wear a long time, but does turn into a very pretty skin scent, very pretty skin scent, um, I would say that would be for you. There isn't a, a particular image in mind that this kind of scent evokes because this is really a very universal scent and because it doesn't have such a big throw it doesn't strike me as a huge personality scent so you're not really making a statement you're not really opening anything about who you are you're just having some sweet honeyed beeswax kind of skin scent so really it would smell good on anyone um really interesting find i will continue wearing it it's probably going to end up being very much a fall scent for me maybe in winter i'll be reaching for it i'll let you know but i am actively using it uh, and i will continue using it until it's gone now whether i will purchase it or not and eh, i'm not so sure because i do get annoyed whenever scents don't last we'll see what kind of relationship we end up in after a while next on the roster is this guy again I have spoken about it at some point in the past, but I do want to give you a mental picture of it. Again, it's been a while since I've mentioned it, and this is Aromatics and Bled by Clinique. Aromatics is the line that I most like from Clinique. I think it's their best line so far. I think it's a fully realized fragrance duo trio, if you consider the original Aromatics, which is a totally different spirit altogether. But Aromatics and Black out of the two, out of the white and black, that's definitely my favorite one. That's definitely one that I would want to wear more. Um, and I think depending on the amount you apply could be worn during the daytime as well. The bottle is very pretty. It lays in your hand very nicely and is actually comfortable to use uh, a lot of the time. Like for instance, like for instance with the Kim Kardashian one, I really like, I, I can't use it easily. I have to have huge paws for that. But here is a very simple, clean design. It, it is a black bottle, glass bottle. It lays very nicely in the hand and it's uh, very pretty and well designed. I like the packaging is what I'm trying to say here. Um, I mean, I can appreciate almost any kind of packaging except for if it's poorly made. 
then I will have an issue with it. Um, and so anything juvenile is like not my jam, but if it is yours, that's totally fine. Maybe, maybe, maybe you like displaying those sorts of things. That's, that's okay. Can be decor. Um, now, the aromatics in black is really up my alley in terms of packaging. It does have gold etching and uh, just a really sleek bottle. So good for them. They went for the minimalistic look and it's very distinctive. This fragrance is an aromatic balsamic. Uh, and when I'm saying balsamic, I don't mean balsam trees. What I mean is it has a ton of amber. This for me is a very ambery fragrance. When I say ambery is that it does evoke the thought of amber smell. Amber could be a very difficult scent to pull up because it can have quite a metallic edge, so it's a tricky note. Not a lot of fragrances do it super well. Um, and here it's not even listed as a note, but this is the impression, the feeling of it, the amberiness. That's what I get. At first I was thinking, is it amber with benzo in? There's definitely tonka bean here, and, and there is. It's uh, also on the manufacturer's uh, note pyramid. There is definitely a tonka bean, and it's very prominent. And uh, they say myrrh. And this is interesting because there's no amber in the description and uh, the, the note pyramid, but I swear I can smell it. There's a very elevated, sophisticated, and almost reverent um, feeling that I get when I smell this. Myrrh is a note that is not very frequently used in perfumery of today. It used to be quite a popular note, but because of the churchy reference, it really did not find a lot of space for itself in modern perfumery, and I'm hoping that this will change. Myrrh is a beautiful, malleable, warm, cozy um, note. And especially in conjunction with the tonka bean, it creates a very comforting space around you and it lasts very well. Now, it doesn't, it's not a projection monster, but you can't overdo it for sure with this guy. It does last well, it wears nicely. Um, it does eventually mold more into the skin scent, as would, I guess, basically any fragrance if worn long enough. I'm obviously attracted to what I would call mysterious fragrances this fall, and I would consider this one one of them. Again, amber is not in the pyramid, but I swear I smell amber. This is just how my brain interprets this particular combination, and I would imagine that you might feel that way about it too. So if you do like amber-like scents or amber-based scents, you might really gravitate towards that as well. There are some miscellaneous white florals and other notes in the background that really aren't very prominent. So when we're thinking about this one, I would say it's more of an ambery uh, myrrh with a heavy base of tonka bean, which is, again, rather comforting. Um, everybody I know probably enjoys a more warm, comforting cozy scents going from fall into winter and usually in winter as well. I might have picked it previously for my fall lineup at some point, but I did find myself gravitating towards it, cozying up with it. In terms of my vision of who might be wearing this scent, this is definitely someone with life experience, someone who's seen a lot in their time, someone who would, would be pressed to ever brag about anything, but would be full of useful and interesting information. There is an introspection to this character. There is a mystery here, not any kind of dirty secrets, but maybe someone with melancholic thoughts about the past, someone who would read next to a window with a candle on, someone who is very satisfied in the quietness and stillness, and projects that and creates that around them. I think the myrrh is probably doing a lot of that heavy lifting because it does make me associated with something introspective, quiet, maybe churchy. There is a softness and a femininity to it. Not that a man couldn't wear it. Um, if somebody really likes myrrh with tonka bean, I, su I suggest that you try this. And the packaging is very unisex as well. But I would say wisdom and softness, edges that were um, smoothed by grinding against the difficulties of life. Um, Aromatics in Black is a very introspective, quietly noble scent. Uh, so if you're into that sort of vibe, I think this would be a good one to test out. 
um, you might really like it. If you do like plummy scents, this would create, a, it does have a bit of a flare of almost plummy syrup, but there's no plum here and it's not in any way fruity, that's not what I'm trying to say, but it does create the same vibe as a not very sweet tonka bean plum wood. Next, I'm pulling out Narciso, the White Q by Narciso Rodriguez. It is a fall staple for me, really. I do like to wear it in the colder weather because I find that it opens most attractively in the cold weather. And I may be ready to get the Puma. So there are several flankers and I own all of them except for the millennial pink one that is a, the called the powdery one. It's not that powdery, it is much sweeter than basically any other uh, flanker from this line. So I was hesitating for a long time, but recently I've developed a taste for sweeter fragrances, which is odd. Uh, it's an olfactory diabetes. And uh, I may pick it up and I may talk to you about it. It's not a new release, but I think I finally got to a place in my life and in my olfactory life that I might want to have it before I had no desire to have it. This was the first one I, I obtained from that line and I got it as soon as it came out because I'm a big fan of the Narciso Rodriguez um, musks. This is no exception if you like creamy musks. Yet again, Narciso Rodriguez strikes again. And as you remember, this is the second one that I'm talking about for the fall fragrances. If the other one is more of a mysterious tuberose floral, this is a very clear gardenia. Um, there is a bit of a different approach to the musk here. It's not so much supporting um, as it is a main note. It's creamy. It's almost milky in its quality. And I think they got it right with the design of the cube because uh, the sort of milkiness of the design echoes in the fragrance, so they did capture the very architectural, yet somehow soft and creamy aspect of it. It is a woody scent, so much more wood here than in the other one. Um, and the wood is integrated with the gardenia in a very interesting way, where the whole time through the wear of this guy, which is actually quite substantial, this is a good well-lasting fragrance. If you like um, a scent to stay with you all day, this would be pretty great at it. I wouldn't say that it, like, you know, 12 hours later you still smell it, maybe, maybe a touch of musk, but not, not much, but it will get you through a work day. I suppose depending on your work day. Um, I've worked shifts of 32 hours, so I wouldn't last through that kind of a work day. We have a dance around cedar here and uh, the cedar is cutting through some of the this creaminess that can get a little bit heavy. So here we have this milky musk with a gardenia, which really emphasize the creaminess. And then we have the cedar that is a bit more elegant and elevating and really takes this into a bit of an avant-garde but gorgeous territory. This is very wearable. Uh, you're not going to suffocate. This would be probably difficult to hate, so this is uh, an appropriate scent, um, which probably isn't going to give you multiple complaints. There is this uh, musk floral similarity to the rest of the fragrances in any line Narciso puts out, but this is what they specialize in. So time and time again, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a musky floral of some sort, an interpretation of it. I'm totally okay with it because I really love what they do with their line. I wouldn't say the scent is soapy, but it is somehow clean. Um, in a way, a newly designed, architectural, beautiful, completely stark white building would be. Uh, maybe there's some sawdust or a spackle that hasn't dried completely. This scent in particular really evokes the feeling of fall for me um, and does make you want to put on a fluffy, um, large knit sweater. It's, it's really that cozy. There is an angora quality of it and if you know the texture of angora, angora yarn is extremely fine and soft in its texture and this is what we're getting here. It is comforting yet somehow super clean yet somehow creamy and woody at the same time 
and none of those components are overpowering. I would say a character that I would imagine wearing this scent is a successful human, a successful person. Perhaps uh, she's running an architectural firm. She is self-confident and self-assured without being boastful. She knows exactly who she is and what she has to offer. She's probably a mother. Uh, she is she is soft in her approach to people. She's likable. Um, yet, I would dare you to try some bullshit with her. Would not be tolerated. This is who you would want to be. <laughs> but this is the idea of a confident yet feminine and soft character um, in a bottle. Which I really enjoy and I really like. Um, I think it's a lovely, lovely pick. I think very um easy to have this as a signature scent because who wouldn't want to be the kind of character that i'm describing it's a pretty great way to exist um, so narciso again is there i think i'm about halfway through the bottle um, because it's a fairly good strength um rather concentrated you really don't need a lot so this guy will probably last you the next is a bit unusual for fall for me uh, but it will be a big hit um, with me, specifically with me. This is the V by Hermes. I am gaga over this scent. I went through a few luxury trial size um, packets of this and oh my goodness, I did splurge, I think maybe in the end of 2019, beginning of 2020 on this guy. The V is finally finally mine. I've been circling around this fragrance for years. I'm very happy that we finally reconciled into the same location and that I can wear the crap out of it. Eau de Marie is a very interesting fragrance, which I consider to be a skin scent fragrance, meaning that I like to wear it in small doses and I like for it to really meld with my skin to the point where it's your skin but something so much better. And uh, probably one of the more unique scents uh, of which I will be speaking today. It is considered as a woody, spicy, aromatic offering. Very unisex. Please, dudes would smell. Oh, dudes would smell fantastic with it. Uh, my skin tends to make everything rounder and softer and more feminine. So this leans very feminine on me, but I actually tried it out on my husband and it smells amazing on him as well. So I think this is uh, all things to all people. You can get away with it at any time and it doesn't matter who you are. Once you spray it, it really has a lot of kick to it and you can immediately detect pepper. Pepper is here in no small amount um, and the whole composition is dancing and molding around a uh, fir cedar combo that is probably the star of the show here um, which is supported by a lot of amber amber is this rounding all-encompassing um, sexy part of the scent it's resinous it's a little bit mossy at the same time and it certainly does have a healthy dose of somewhat bitter orange that's lifting the whole thing and making it a lot more wearable for other seasons, not just winter. Um, very interesting perfume and probably I'm picking it up because it's ambery fur, because it makes me think of quiet uh, forest, maybe a small path that not a lot of people walk. And again, quite an introspective scent. I, this is kind of, kind of mood I'm in for this fall. A lot of introspective fragrances, clearly. Uh, and the Ademavi is definitely giving you that vibe. Uh, it's working for it and it's showing up in the best possible way. Uh, again, one might think that those kinds of notes are really going to lean masculine, but it does not. It's a place more than a character. And again, what I'm imagining is this slightly dense, um, resinous wood with evergreens. It's slightly somber, it's serious. It's not a tropical forest, obviously, by any means. And maybe it's getting a little cold and the squirrels hid away their um, pine cones and, and buried them for use in the winter. And perhaps the fox is sneaking around. The wolf is being majestic somewhere in the distance. 
there's not snow on the ground, but everything is a little more brown and damp and serious, but there's no rain right now. This is not a wet scent. It's pretty dry. It's quite an interesting sensation. For me, it evokes that kind of a space, that kind of a place, completely quiet. Perhaps you can hear birds every once in a while, and there's a woodpecker maybe pecking as well, but it is that feeling that you're sort of alone in the world, one with nature. This, <laughs> that's what the Maori makes me feel like. I'm not really sure why it's called what it's called, but that's what it makes me feel like. It makes me feel fantastic. Again, introspection. Four out of six today are much more serious uh, and introverted. Lastly, I had to add a Chanel number no. five. I am usually quite faithful to either Au Premier or Eau de Toilette. Those are my two favorites from the line. But Pure Parfum is what we're talking about today. This is what I really wanted to pull out. And that's what I really wanted to wear. It's this tiny Pure Perfume baby bottle. And this is not a trial size. This is a full size bottle, guys. So ridiculously small and you just need a, the tiniest of dabs to uh, apply which is why Peur Parfum does, it does not require a massive application. This is a very sophisticated and elevated um, little guy, probably one of the most elegant scents that I own. It is most similar to the other toilette which is uh, used to be my absolute favorite. Now Au Premier is pushing it out of its throne just a little bit. Uh, I still love the Eau de Toilette and it is definitely a more classic uh, interpretation with a vintage edge, whereas Au Premier is much more modern. This is similar to the Eau de Toilette, but less aldehydic, less harsh in the very, very first minute or two of wear. It is a woody uh, floral aldehyde, obviously. The Chanel 5 line is known for being a huge classic, it doesn't suit everyone, not everybody likes it. Uh, I think Au Premier as well as, this is very wearable. Now, pure perfume, you would imagine that it is extremely concentrated, just knocks everything out on its path and is somewhat aggressive because when I'm thinking about pure perfume uh, concentrations, I'm thinking about a sillage beast, which is not this. This wears into a beautiful, very clean, skin scent. Um, maybe it takes six or seven hours to get to that place um, and it takes all the best that is in the Chanel number no. five and concentrates it, uh, edits it. So all of the harshness, all of the slight edginess that certain ones carry, certain iterations, for instance, Eau de Parfum and uh, Eau de Toilette, they both are a little bit um, they, they do have something that needs to lift from the skin to really open that orchestra of goodness and elegance and uh, cleanliness, which is what Chanel Number no. 5 does. For me, it's a very clean scent. It's uh, expensive. For me, uh, Chanel Number no. 5 is a very expensive department store, handmade, uh, imported from France. So. And that's how it opens on my skin. So it really evokes that luxurious cleanliness. Like you just took a bath um, in a bathtub with uh, claw feet and, and a, a beautiful huge window next to you. And perhaps you're, you're drinking champagne at the same time. There's an effervescence, a bubbliness to the scent. Here, this effervescence is there. In the other toilet, it's much more pronounced and it's fizzy on the opening. Whereas here, you have more gentle interpretation of aldehydes, you have some florals, it's the, a combo of um, iris and ylang ylang, some rose, some white florals, and uh, very pretty classic woodiness in the base. It is a beauty. And I think, again, appropriate for any occasion. I have so many amazing memories connected to number five that was the scent I chose for my wedding as well. 
Um, and uh, it's just something that is probably going to be with me forever because it is such a universally flattering scent. I think it gets bad rap probably because people mostly immediately go for the other parfum, which is a bit abrasive for me even. <laughs> and I've smelled number five my whole life. I actually don't own the other parfum because of that. I feel that it's a little bit too much for me. It's a little bit too abrasive. And the interpretation that's out right now is maybe a little too 80s. I'm not sure, but it makes me think of that era. However, the Pure Parfum is a very classic interpretation of the scent. And I would imagine, because I know that the Eau Toilette is the closest to the original release of the number five, and this is super close to the Eau Toilette, but less slightly less fizzy and harsh in the opening. That's probably pretty close to what what this fragrance release does. I don't really have a clear picture of a woman who would wear this, mostly because this is such a, um, a popular scent that you smell reasonably frequently that I don't have a specific, like it's a bit of a faceless feeling about it. I feel like it's my scent, right? Um, but I don't feel like it is a particular character. It feels like a deliciously clean and quaffed individual, and that's about it, because this can be worn by absolutely anyone. So those are my six scents that I'm using this fall that I've been gravitating towards and I wanted to um, talk about. What are the scents that you're really going for this fall? What attracts you? What sort of a mood are you in? Clearly, I'm in a very uh, quiet, introverted, introspective space in my head, which is not surprising given where the world has gone to these days. Um, do you feel the same? Do you feel like you are more into the uplifting, spicy, uh, mulled wine sort of sense. What what are you into and what have you been pulling out um, in terms of your fragrance picks? Do tell me down below. I'm always very curious to know. That's it for today. See you guys later. Have a good day. Stay safe and take care of each other.